All right, Pinehurst is pleased to be joined by a gentleman whose very fine smile is uh, all over the hallways of Pinehurst Resorts Clubhouse, really the star of 2005, Jason Gore. Welcome back to Pinehurst. This is your first time back at Pinehurst on number two since what? Sunday of the of 2005 US Open? Sunday of 2005, yeah, first time I've been on property. What, what, uh, what, what went through your mind walking through the clubhouse this morning then? I mean, it's a little different than last time, you know, it's uh, without the 100,000 people here or whatever it was, but uh, it's a pretty special place. I mean, I got to the first tee and just kind of all these fond memories come through my brain about, uh, about you know, the ovations and just kind of going through what I did and how I screwed up. <laughs> you know, I kind of <laughs> kind of remembered more of the, the good shots than I did the bad shots, but uh, I think that was a good thing, but it was just... It just unbelievable special place and it just kind of gives me the chills just to be here again. What's your fondest memory when you look back on, on that week? I would say making birdie on Saturday on 18 to get into the final group. I just we were just talking about it just walked off the 18th grade and, and uh, remember where the whole location was I remember exactly what the putt did and I remember making it and doing that cheesy little point I did that I don't I even know what happened but um, and then looking up in the stands and watching everybody just stand up in, in unison. And uh, it just gave me chills. It actually scared the heck out of me. <laughs> but uh, um, that was probably the coolest part because I was facing right at the bleachers and seeing everybody in the grandstands just stand up. And it's pretty awesome. <laughs> what, what do you take looking back on, you mentioned it, the Sunday round. What? What did that teach you? What did, what did you take from that going forward in your career? Because obviously you've had a pretty successful career in golf, whereas maybe coming into that week, maybe you didn't know where your career in golf was going. Yeah, I mean, I took a lot out of the last round just by learning about who I was and what it actually meant to me. And, um, you know, I knew that no matter what golf tournament I'd ever be in, it doesn't matter if it was a final group of a major on Sunday again, that I had been there. And... Um, you know, it, it took my knocks, but it was it was such a great learning experience. Retief was amazing to play with, and everybody was even better to, just, just to me. I mean, it didn't really matter what I shot. Everybody was still in my corner, and uh, and it, it was just amazing. I get kind of choked up just thinking about, you know, people, how, how, how great they were, you know, screaming my name, walking down the fairways and, and just rooting for me. But... Uh, it was it was it was a great lesson in humility and and, and uh, just uh, just about game about the game. What you know, you went on back to the nationwide tour, won three straight events a few weeks after that, and you've had this you know career blossom for you. How much did that week in 2005, right here on Pioneers, on number two, change your life, change your career? What? It, it definitely changed both. I mean, it changed my life and career. It, it gave me the confidence, even even after shooting 84 on Sunday, that I can play at this level. And like I said, every time I got into another group, another final group on the final day, I knew I had seen the worst. I knew it would never get that bad again, and I knew how to handle it. And I knew what, how I was going to feel, how my nerves, you know, my emotions, and everything like that. So I think once you kind of realize you're you're nervous and you're you know you got a million thoughts running through your head, you can kind of grasp it let it go and move on to, to what you're trying to do. And I think that's what I learned was just, I had to take everything in and accept what I was doing and know I was nervous as I'll get up and and, and uh, just let it go and just go play. And I think, you know, to this day, it's, it's, it's helped me. Very different golf course than what you experienced nine years ago with this restoration, hearkening back to what Donald Ross intended in the 30s and 40s for this golf course. You've played it today. What are your thoughts? So you, again, you've played so well in 05 and now a very different golf course. Uh, your thoughts on this transformation? I think it's amazing. It looks like nobody's ever touched it. That's that's what blows me away. Is it looks like it's been there for 100 years. And, and you know, you, you take your hats off to Crenshaw and Coor for, for doing it. But, you know, there's just no rough. So everything's just sand. And it's going to be a kind of a potluck on what, what kind of law you're mm -hmm. going to draw on the stuff. But um, it, it's... It's hard. It's difficult. It's going to be a great test of golf. The last thing before we let you go, walking through those halls today, seeing your pictures up there, what does what does this place mean to you? 
it's it's it means so much to me. It just just to be like a little piece involved with the history of this great establishment. It's it's it's. it's I mean, I can't even describe it. It's such an honor, and, and just I'm very humbled to be even considered to be part of this. And you know, for a guy who finished tied for 50th and at one U.S. Open they had here, just to be you know in that same book. I mean, I wouldn't say paragraph or sentence, but it's uh, it's it's quite an honor, and this place just means the world to me. Good deal, Jason Gore. Thank you for your time today. Best of luck going forward. We hope we see you in June. Hope so too. Thank, thank you. you.